Hello everyone and welcome back to Campfire Sessions. This Sunday we have a lot of people uh, that will be presented um, this time. Um, unfortunately, we did lose one person along the way. Um, can everybody hear me fine? I hope that everybody can hear me just fine. Um, I am doing this inside of a cafe as of right now. It's raining outside. Usually, I usually do them outside, but here we are today. Um, Thank you for everybody who's joining right now. We're waiting for probably two or three more people to come in and then we'll get this started. Um, yeah, so far, so good. For everybody um, that probably hasn't found out or actually, I'm pretty sure everybody knows by now, but um, I wanted to do a moment of silence for uh, Chadwick Bossman. Um, he left behind an extremely good legacy. You know, um, I was hurt when I found out the news at first and I'm actually still in shock. Uh, that he died in my eyes so young within his career he had much more to go as such as black panther 2 you know and so um if you peep our story or if you check out our story you'll see that i did uh make a section for him you know just for him so here we are today man um let me see oh here we are we're we're ba basically ready to get this started i actually couldn't wait for this um we do repeating one more time we are missing one person she had uh, a delay and she had to leave uh, pretty early I loved all the people that are showing up right now this is great but without further ado we're gonna start campfire sessions if people don't know what this one is about this is about the unspoken rules of society which addresses social etiquette how it plays into social dynamics that then plays into the social climate that we're that we experience throughout our lives so um, here we go without further ado I would like to bring grace on first uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have people come on, introduce themselves. There's five questions for them to answer. Um, then we're going to go into the second segment, which is just breaking down certain questions that have to deal with the subject matter, the unspoken rules of society. So here we go. Um. Hey. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Wow, you, you look really bright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, yeah, yeah. Your face is glowing. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Oh, um, thank nice you. to see you. You're welcome. No problem at all. It's been a while, a while since I last this is bumped into you. I mean, we only saw each other once in life, right? I guess. I know. <laughs> I know. God, time is flying. I can't do. believe it these days. Time is flying. The older you get, it seems like the more time flies, right? Let me ask you a quick question before we continue. Is my background okay? Like, can you hear me? Yeah, fine? I can hear you fine. It's it's just like lagging in and out. Is, am I coming through okay? Yeah, you're coming through perfectly fine. All right, cool. I just want to know. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and run this, excuse me. Um, so please let the audience know who you are. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Grace, uh, Grace Guffey, and I'm a mindfulness coach and self-love expert. Uh, more formally, I'm a licensed mental health counselor, and I specialize in treating codependency and anxious attachment. I help people just like you, and so that's that's what I do. Okay, 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 okay. My bad for a second. My phone might have been lagging uh, for a second. I had to switch off the Wi-Fi. I wanted to use my cell service. I felt like it would be a little bit more better. Yeah, um, no and moving forward, where are you from and where are you at now? <laughs> oh, well, my uh, I'm from everywhere. I've lived so many different places in my life, but right now I'm in Florida. Okay. So um, I, I'm my practice is based out of Florida, but I see all my clients online all over the world. So I have clients in Florida, uh, Canada, Europe, some places in the Middle East, um, and sometimes in Asia, depending on the time difference. But okay. um, but I'm in the Florida area. All right, all right, all right. Moving forward, how are you? <laughs> you know, we got to ask you that question, make sure everything's all right with you, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, I was thinking about this earlier. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to talk about being authentic. So, <laughs> all right. So truthfully, right now, I'm a little crampy. But earlier, okay. <laughs> I was not in it. Um, but generally, it's Sunday. I feel pretty good. It's I was born on Sunday, and I think that's why I like it. But... Sunday is kind of like a reset day for me, it lets me let go of last week, helps me kind of prepare for the new week. And uh, so I'm in good energy and good spirits today. 
Nice, 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 nice. Oh, another thing is it's raining outside, so that's a little bit, you know, therapeutic. You know, that's I was gonna sit outside and do this, but I just don't want my phone to get wet. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Then we'll have technical difficulties. Um, so, what encouraged you to uh, come on uh, campfire sessions? Well, I mean, you're a big part of that, of course. Um, you and I, we met uh, maybe like a year, year or two ago. Um, yes. at this bar that we used to go to when we lived on that yes. side of town. But we started talking about our passions about humanity and and how we want to kind of just learn and educate and help people evolve past their ego selves. And so today uh, I was really excited to be able to come on here and actually talk about the ego and saving face and code switching and things like that today. So I want to share a little bit of my expertise and um, mindfulness and some healing experiences to kind of uh, help you along the way. Okay. Okay. Thank you for taking the time out to uh, come on. I, I appreciate yeah. that. I know you are very busy. You have clients. I remember going back and forth with you and talking back and forth with you and you told me like, is it on a Friday? And I was <laughs> like, no, it's not August 28th. It's August 30th. Um, I know. I was like, what the hell? What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very glad that you were able to take the time to yeah. come on. I can't wait for your presentation. Also remember, I, I know that you have some good answers to the questions that are coming up next. I'm interested in also hearing those. Uh, Moving forward, um, what do you think is an unspoken rule uh, in today's society? Well, I think one of the main things that you'll kind of talk about later on is code switching. Um, if you're mm. not familiar with code switching, it's almost synonymous with saving face. Um, mm. And that's what I really want to talk about today because a lot of my work centers on helping people find connection. And vulnerability is necessary for connection. But if we're stuck in our ego selves and we're constantly saving face, it becomes the antithesis of vulnerability. And I think in a way, in our what culture... What is the antithesis? It's like, <clears throat> For those like the nemesis, like the complete opposite. Like it, com it completely prevents the ability to be vulnerable. Saving mm -hmm. face is like the opposite of doing that. And so I think it goes a lot in line with ego development. And I'll go into that a lot later, but... Basically, I do think saving face is a survival tactic that people mm -hmm. have to do, especially in this culture, in this society. And so I definitely want to talk about that soon. Okay, no problem, no problem. Thank you, Grace. It was great hearing from you. Thank you yeah. for your introduction. It was lovely. Like I said, you definitely are glowing. It's a little bit on that side of your face. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> nonetheless, we're about to bring up uh, Justin next, guys. Here we go. Boom. Uh, hey everybody, next up is Jason. He's in the audience right now. I can't wait to hear from his brother. He's a great, great guy. And here we go. <laughs> Thank you for the love. I see the hearts. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, it took a while to get this far. Slowly but surely, we are still building campfire sessions. <laughs> what up, man? Oh, what's going on? Look at that oh, my, room. My, my, my bad, my bad. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm used to wearing my mask now, so you know. <laughs> totally. You no, know, we lie. I'm like, let me put on my mask. But I, my bad. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, we are not in person. Not right now. Right now. Oh, that was so funny. Yo, um, so uh, what I wanted you to do was, uh, you know, I. You probably already know the introduction and how it kind of flows, but I'm going to go ahead and yeah. recite the questions again. You know, of course, I'm going to be doing this for everybody who's coming on board. But uh, first, please let the audience know who are you. Well, first, I just want to thank God for being here with you. you. Um, I, I really take honor and humility in, in this interaction. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, you. Yeah, man. So I am Jaston Artist hip-hop renaissance artist here in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, the DMV area. Um, I'm also a business owner of Artist Studios, uh, which is an artist development company that I do from the operation of my house. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so uh, I've been in the industry for a very long time, self-taught musician, producer, writer, do a lot, but I put in the work. So uh, I just love, I guess in a sense, teaching and uh, you know, I guess really helping people understand their craft from how they do it mm -hmm. as well as the business side from what I've learned hands-on and 
working with people, being in school, you know, those type of things. Well, really glad to be here. Thank you so much for uh, coming on board. Your promotion was amazing. Uh, first and foremost, for those who don't know Jackson Artist, please check out his music. He will be performing uh, tonight for Campfire Sessions. I will have to say like, that is yes, totally sir. amazing. Your promotion uh, taught me some things about uh, how to promote things. And yeah, I, I look forward to working with you in the future. Um, so where are you originally from? And right, you said right now you're in Alexandria, Virginia, am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, shout out to the West Coast. Not only so, like, I know nothing about Utah, I'm going to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> most people don't expect me to say that, so I, I was like, I'm going to say it today. Uh, but yeah, Salt Lake City, Utah is where I was born, but I spent most of my life here in the DMV area, mm -hmm. as well as uh, North Carolina. This is time in Wilmington, North Carolina, and uh, Greensboro, where I went to school, North Carolina A&T State University, Aggie Pride, any Aggies on? You know? Uh, so, yeah, I've, I've kind of like Grace, I'm, I feel like I've been all over the place, but most of the time is in Virginia and North Carolina. Wow, okay, 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 nice, nice, nice. Um, and how are you right now? How are you feeling right now, today? Today, man, I'm not even going. I'm not even going front. Like Grace said, I'm gonna be very transparent, open, and honest. Okay, <laughs> yes, always. I I am tired. Um, I think a, a bit emotional. Uh, Floors a bit, you know. Uh, a lot of things happened this week in the world as well as personally. But mm -hmm. I feel good. I'm alive here. I get to talk with you, so I can't complain, man. I'm happy that you are here, and we're going to make this day better by even being having this great conversation for others to learn from, you know? We're all teachers in our own right, right? So this right. is, I'm looking forward to, uh, to the, the answers that are, that are uh, excuse me, spoken of when it comes down to the questions. Now, also, what encouraged you to come on Campfire Sessions today, besides myself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, let's shout out our man Shaquem of the LMU Society. It's mm -hmm. a producer, artist community that I think I found. Or he found me. I'm not really sure how it happened. I think last year, late last year. And so I feel like we've really been connected. You know, I, I was pretty involved in um, his setup. And then I guess maybe like three-ish months ago, he connected us and just said, hey, Jasmine, Troy, I think, you know, y'all need to connect. Right. And so, uh when people say that, you know how it goes. It's like, okay, yeah, you check them out. Most of the time, it does not end up being, yeah, it doesn't end up being anything. And that's, I mean, it just is what it is. People are busy. The times that we're in right now, it's, it's, it's a bit tough. But um, we, we instantly kind of just connected. You know, I looked you up, you looked me up. Like, yo, this dude is dope. Seems like what he's doing is, is very you. parallel to what I'm doing. But also, I think for me, I'm looking to really expand what I'm doing and the only way 100%. to really do that is network. You know 100%. I mean? so, 100%. So Put I yourself like we out just, yeah, oh, yeah. We just really connected on some of the same things and you know, then you presented this opportunity. I watched it, uh, the first one and I was like, yo, this is dope to really, again, have conversations about real stuff from real people all over the world. Yes, yes, sir. Oh, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. And then, last but not least, what do you think is a unspoken rule in today's society? Man, we like look. I was listening to Grace, and I was like, man, she hitting on some stuff. Like we about to get educated today, okay? <laughs> uh, but from my perspective, you know, I can always you always got to talk about what you know. I actually have a few things. One is this way that. You know, your career, your job, it's only one way to success. And the long way isn't, like, if you're going the long way, then you're not as successful or you're not um, playing a huge role to society or you don't have this, you don't have that. Or, and, and even with, I think, in the times that we're in with technology and things like that, you know, 10-year-olds are... are business men and women you know what i mean like right what so it's like i still feel like there's this rule of the traditional sense of 
yes, you should get your education. However you do that now is, you know, there's many ways to do that. Right, right. But uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, you get your education, you'll get this great job that you were educated for, and then once you get this job, you'll get paid all this money to have your car and your... I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but being a person that I tried that and it didn't really work out that way for me. Right. There's more ways right. to get it, you know? 100%. Um, 100%. And then the other thing that I would like to add that just is real to my heart is that fathers aren't equal in parenting. You know, I'm, I'm experiencing that as a parental alienated parent. Uh, it's not easy. And I would equate it to like women's rights, you know, minorities, like all these different mm -hmm. things that are going on immensely right now. But fathers still don't seem to be equal to parenting and raising kids, but then we look at all the stats, and so I feel like there's this unspoken rule right. that, you know, it's all about the moms, fathers don't really matter. I mean, we see it, Mother's Day, Father's Day, is it the same thing? <laughs> you know, and I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying that in a society sense, right, you know, but yeah, so I, I think those those two things are really a big dynamic for me that I've experienced firsthand. So. Mm, mm. Yo, very, very interesting point. Very interesting point. I actually like that. Um, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about the questions because that was I, that was a real that was even a real brave move too. A lot of people would not go ahead and say that at all. That's like a private conversation that men have with exactly. men. You know, it so ain't that's... private no more, man. It ain't private no more. <laughs> He's like, I'm putting it all you out right now. Right. Yeah, that's why it's called what? Campfire sessions, and we're all human. So yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Yes, sir. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring on the next person. Um, thank you, Justin, 100 percent once again for coming on. Um, because I know everybody's in for a pretty long ride. This is the first time that we're gonna extend the show for three hours instead of two. So let's get it on. Let's continue. All, all right. right. Thank you, next. brother. No problem. Next up, we have Corey coming up. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So uh, let's see if Corey's ready. Oh, before we go to Corey, Diana said it's built on tradition. Parroting is an equal job. Very interesting. Not one more than the other. Okay, okay. So we have some perspectives here. We Men are also looked down on for seeking mental health this is very true this is another thing that's very true i wanted to take this, this time just to probably contribute to toxic masculinity Ooh. you know what i like the comments so far that's flowing through i would also like to possibly bring the guest on we do have a section for guests to speak their mind 100 percent uh, during the second hour so without further ado i'm gonna continue the introductions and then we're gonna jump into the session further all right boom It goes Corey, man. This is going to be amazing. This is his first time on a live video. Um, I was happy to finally be able to get him on. You know, thank you for being such a good, uh, a grand supporter of human, I must say, myself. Um, you, you, you have, um, <laughs> yeah, man, thank you, man. Like, There's not enough words that I could uh, put together at this point in time, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to say thank you straight up, you know. Mm. So um, I wanted you to introduce yourself to the audience as to who you are. All right, man. As you stated, you know, um, first interview here, what, what have you. Um, so my name is Corey, you know, um, formerly known as like Selfless in the city. I had an entertainment company called Selfless Music Group. Uh, the intention was to be a referral service company for independent artists throughout the community. They created a community in Atlanta. Uh, we developed a lot of partnerships, affiliate relationships with different brands and different companies. However, we had to close COVID-19. So that's a little bit about my back. Um, today, you know, since the closure of that, I'm in pursuit of my dream, um, becoming an author, a writer right now, creating blogs, um, and I'm creating a life coaching practice called Champion Service Inc. as well. Um, mm. I'm, all about, I'm all about authenticity, um, human connectivity, i.e., you know, creating positive human interactions, and therefore experiences amongst individuals, uh, mm -hmm. people or within oneself, you know, internal dialogue as well as external communication, both very mm. important in the identity of self and then our role in society. How we so that's a little bit about me. I'm actually surprised this is flowing as well because I was extremely nervous, bro. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> well, listen, man. Uh, I, I know I don't look like it, but I'm nervous too. Trust me. Um, what yeah. happens is sometimes, real quick, what your brain does is um, your thoughts are kind of running fast, but your output is at is is being paced by your nervousness. So you're so nervous. Like when I appeared on NPR for the Ghost Project, I was so nervous that sentences were flying through my head, but some way, somehow, I was pacing myself with perfect accuracy as it came out. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a weird system thing that, it's a weird thing that happens to me, and I think it's from being nervous. And as you can see, I still stumble from time to time when I talk. Mm -hmm. um, moving forward, though, where are you from and where are you at now? Well, I'm originally born in New York, um, but that's my yeah. only exclusive. <laughs> Every time yeah. I say that to my peers, they're like, man, you a Floridian. Like, yeah, I'm a Floridian. I grew up here, been here for almost 20 years, 20 plus years now. Um, went to, you know, elementary school up to college two times, having dropped out for the second time. And then I pursued entrepreneurship. We'll get into that at a later time if necessary. Um, for sure. That's for where sure. I'm at. Right now, I'm in Orlando, Florida. In the Metro West area, just cool and living my best life. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. How are you doing today, by the way? Uh, honestly, I'm just I'm grateful to see today. You know, a lot of chaos as well as opportunity that's unforeseen in this time right now. I'm just glad to experience it the way I have. Extremely blessed to have you. Great, great, great. Nice, nice. And last but not least, uh, well, not last but not least, excuse me, two more questions. What okay. encouraged you to come on Campfire Sessions outside of myself? Ah, man, that's not a tough question, bro. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, that's what I'm good at. You know, tough have positive, positive experiences. Um, but I'd say, like, the aesthetic and the intention behind the human brand is what really draws me the most. You know, offering different perspectives um, in that of letting people get an opportunity to share their stories um, to further influence and encourage the world. You know, I think that is extremely important. Again, it's vital to have people share and express themselves. And you're giving them an opportunity to do that. Um, already, you've been international and everything, man. Congratulations, Robbie. Thank, Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. that. That's, that's just you. awesome, man. Looking forward to the more development. For sure. Thank, Thank you. 100%. And last but not least, uh, what do you think is an unspoken rule in today's society? Uh, that's a toughie, man. I got a lot to say, not much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well we here for it. we here for it. I guess... Um, for today, I guess I could talk about like kind of relational health, but on the surface level, you know, I don't have like an expertise as far as education, academics and stuff. However, I do, you know, I'm a very charismatic person and I've interacted with thousands of people throughout my lifetime, throughout various services and just being social, you know, people know me as selfless. If you go into the entertainment community, you ask maybe like probably like one out of every 20 people, they're probably, oh yeah, bro, I know that I'm following them on IG. You know, and it's really the energy that people come up with. So I want to kind of give people perspectives on the relationship, on how to develop. You know, I believe there's three key principles. Um, there's going to be attitude, behavior, and just general likeness or interest. And those mm -hmm. are I'm going to dive into later on and help us to how to influence our relationship. Okay, no problem, no problem. And so what I'm going to do is thank you, Corey, for your introduction. I appreciate it 100%. I'm going to be bringing you back on, so stay tuned for sure. And now, people, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go to Jano, right? Here he is without further ado. I know that he's here right now. I can't wait to bring him on. He's an artist, too. He will be performing later. Um, here we go. <laughs> Oh man, you got me live today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we are, live in the building, man. You know what I'm saying? I told you this was coming for sure, oh, for sure, one hundred percent. We're here. Okay, what's up, everybody? We here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, without further ado, are you, okay, you still there? That's perfect. That's perfect. Without I'm further ado, I'm please introduce yourself to the uh, the audience. All right, hey world. Um, my name is Jay Norman. I'm an artist out here locally in Orlando, Florida. Um, I love music. Um, generally, I just love freestyling. I love writing. I love creating content and uh, playing with different voices and, and bending sounds. Nice, That's nice. Right That's there. Yeah, man. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, where are you from? Are you from Orlando? And where are you at now? We know that you're in Orlando, Florida, but where are you from? Strictly Orlando, still, man. I'm still okay. from Orlando, man. All, okay. Always here, man. All right, all right. And how are you feeling today? I, I think I'm okay. I'm, I'm a little. Okay, um, good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, let me be real on social media. Right? If everybody being transparent, so I'll be transparent too. Um, I think I'm just okay. I'm pretty much just going through the motions of this year. Um, it's just it's getting a little tiring at this point with so many events that are going on. But these are happening for like generations to come. But I think it's just with the world, it's kind of like it's kind of wild. And then I guess with the job I work at too, everyone's kind of stressed. There's like a lot of energy going around right now. So right. Definitely protect your energy, people, and uh, make sure you definitely take time out to meditate and pray over situations. Um, that's where I'm yes, at right indeed. now, headspace wise. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Moving forward, um, what what encouraged you to come on Camp Fight Sessions outside of myself? As why you said I saw yourself, man. You know, I was about to say you. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I met you through Imani. Um, you told me about the event, and I was pretty hyped when I met you that night. Um, so, unfortunately, I have to break your rule, and I have to say it's definitely because of you. I didn't I didn't really know much knowledge about the event until you told me about it, and then I started looking through some of the um, information online. So, it's I, I broke your rule, but it's, it's all you, man. It's, it's you. That's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and what do you think is an unspoken rule of society? <laughs> um, Oof. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, every time y'all hit this question, man, y'all, it's yeah, like struggling now, like, um, <laughs> I think that everyone should just be appreciative of things. That, that, that's a rule that just, I think it's kind of bothering if I think about it. Everyone's always Ooh. had to be appreciative of things that are happening in their lives, and that's kind of pointless to me. Um, there are so many things happening in people's lives rapidly that we need to take in consideration what is going on in people's lives and take consideration that everyone doesn't have good days. Just be respectful. Be peaceful towards people. I could say that's a – maybe I broke all those rules. I, that, that's where I probably I'm vented sorry. all into that. But um, I kind of feel like that with the school system. People always have this generalization that, you, oh, you should just be appreciative if you have a job. It doesn't mean that your job makes you happy. It doesn't mean anything to me. Your passion is what makes you happy. It just may be harder to get to the passion to fulfill the rest of your life. So that's mm. how it. Yeah. Mm. I loved your perspective. Loved it. Loved it. I loved everybody's perspective, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. That was real. Uh, one young lady did comment that that is so sweet. She really uh, did enjoy what you said. It. Appreciate it. Yes, appreciate yes, it. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, you definitely did leave an impact with the people. Um, but now what we're going to do people is uh, I'm going to call you back up again. We're going to go right back into the same order. Thank you. Uh, how do I pronounce the name again? I don't. Jay, Jay Noman? Jay Noman. There we Jay go. Noman. Thank you, Jay Noman. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I look forward to your performance later, but now we're going to get into the topic of discussion and get this ball rolling, all right? So all right, here we go. <laughs> Ooh, that was great. I love that. You know, it is very true to be kind. Uh, thank you, Diana. I appreciate your comments also. I appreciate you even tuning in. I appreciate everybody who has taken the time to tune in as of right now. Like I said, we're still growing and working on ourselves as a platform. Um, so here we go. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to bring back up Grace. <laughs> here we go. Oh, man. Hey, Grace. I'm back. <laughs> Once again, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, of course, I know that you saw the three questions, but I'm going to go ahead and reiterate them again. Um, so I was wanted to first ask you, how do you use body language to communicate? What has been your personal experience? Um, well, I just realized I read that question wrong earlier. So I'm going to answer it kind of near to what you just asked. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so... Well, body language is essential to communication. And, you know, we're no different in how we do it. You know, we're all human and we kind of communicate with our words. But before we had words, we had gestures. It's our tone mm-hmm. of voice. It's our facial expressions. So I think a lot of times body language is forgotten in the communication process. And mm. um, kind of the things that I see in, in, with my clients is when they get in relationships, let's say, uh, with a partner who gives them mixed messages. And, uh, it's, you know, when that happens, it's a, it's a breeding ground for insecurities. It's, you know, it's hard to trust someone. And I think that's kind of what we search for as human beings, the ability to connect and trust with other people. Um, mm. But the problem is, is if we aren't as authentic, uh, we can be incongruent. 
And what that means is that what I say and what I feel on the inside are different. Congruent means what I say, what I feel, what I do is all in harmony. harmony. And I think the more that you become your authentic self, the more you're able to link that up together. But um, what I kind of tell my clients often is I go back to this quote by Maya Angelou, and it's, you know, she said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. And yes, if you're indeed. really struggling with relationships or with other people, and even think about how much division we have right now in this country, how hard it is to feel safe with each other. Um, so a quick way to understand whether you're with someone who's congruent or not is to look at their body language. Body language. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom. I love the way you answered the first question. You brought it right back home. That was yeah. good. That was good. That was good. So let me ask you, uh, when did you... Uh, have to change your social, when was there a time that you had to change your social etiquette within a social dynamic <laughs> to, fit a, to fit the social climate? In other words, when did you have to use code switching uh, and, why, and, and why was it? What was the case behind it? Oh man, um, I, I feel like, uh, I think every presenter that's here with us today is Cor uh, Justin, Corey, all of us, we can, uh, genome and we can all kind of share in this experience trying to mm -hmm. assimilate to the majority. Um, mm -hmm. my, my mom's Filipino and my dad mm -hmm. is Caucasian and my entire life that was a huge struggle for me um, trying to kind of figure out how to belong in a group and it, it was really tough. A lot of bullying, not being accepted by either group and just kind of feeling like an outcast and the desire to belong is coded deep in our DNA. It, it, mm -hmm. And we have consequences of it if we're not belonging. And I think you can see that from quarantine, but I think because I didn't fit in all these groups, I had to find a way to survive. I had to find a way to belong or assimilate. And so I had to code switch or I had to save face by figuring out what to wear in order to be part of this group, how to even speak, how to even, like the things that I liked, how I dressed. How do I fit in so I, so people don't figure out I'm not a part of the group? And I think that was instilled in me from a survival mechanism, and it took a lot of the consequences of that to, to be able to grow out of that and overcome my ego. Um, but to, to not feel like you belong, that you can live a life feeling lonely and misunderstood and isolated, and, and I think our culture right now reinforces and emphasizes being the individual so much that we're so disconnected. And I think that's why we're seeing all of the suffering on a massive scale even today, because we're having to constantly save face or code switch when we can't even be ourselves. Mm. True selves. Mm. 100%. Oh man, you just got to burst the hearts going. This is great. Oh, thanks, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We really I was like, really nervous I really too. Like it's coming said. and going. So I'm okay. glad it's coming out right. I feel you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely have a good flow of words. I, I love it, to be honest. When, uh, and how do, you, <clears throat> how do you detect unforeseen uh, programming? Like, you know, media, things of that nature, like just things that we're taught that we may not agree with. How do you, uh, how do you see that? Yeah, um, well, this kind of goes in line to what I was talking about, the consequences that we experience when we don't belong. For me, all those years of trying to find some sort of belonging, and I moved all the time. You know, I was born in Virginia. Um, you know, shout out, Jackson. But, like, I lived all over the place, too, so it was really hard to, to figure out who I was and figure out how to connect with other people. Um, but in order to detect unforeseen programming, you have to do the inner work first. And that's kind of what I had to do. Uh, the consequences of feeling isolated my entire life was, was severe mental illness. I had addictions for a long time, trauma, toxic relationships, all of that. And there were so many bottoms I've had. I bottomed out like a lot. And I've made a mess of my life for many years. I did. And so I think, I think for anyone to evolve past their ego you have to kind of have a number of bottom bottom rock bottoms you have to have a number of awakening moments to be able to look at yourself and say who am I truly all of who am I all of these parts together and if you start to accept yourself and you understand your unforeseen programming it is easy to see it in other people but it's always an inner process you always have to start with you first <laughs> 
Man, that was yeah, that was yeah, yeah, that was, that was good. Just soaking really in. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually listening to No One Type Time. I'm like, I'm like, I know that I host the program, but for a second I sat back and I was like, just <laughs> watching you talk. Like, wow, I feel like I'm one of the observers. <laughs> you know, like for real. <laughs> you know, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Oh uh, well, thank you, Grace, for answering the questions. Uh, I appreciate you and your perspective 100. percent I actually can't wait. Um, I, I I can't wait to uh, to recap this and actually uh, slice out your part and use it as the part of the story for Instagram because you really did. You really awesome, did, uh, yeah, rock that. definitely did for sure. For real. Well, yeah, you really really touch home, and that was good. Awesome. <laughs> we'll see you later, all right? Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll for be the back. presentation, no problem. Right. My gosh, bye bye. All right, all right be back. <laughs> All right. Well, that was really, really good. Um, we're about to jump right back into this with Justin and bring him on and see what he has to say uh, concerning the three questions that were being presented. We will also have time later on in the session for our audience members to uh, come on and also speak their perspectives, too. Um, so here we go. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Justin. Here we are. <laughs> Uh, here he is with the mask again. Oh my bad, my bad, now, my bad. Now he has like, a different way. He's yeah, doing promotion. Yeah. He's smoking. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you know, yeah. P game. You know, P game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's my body language right now. Is putting on my mask everywhere I go. You know. Hey, oh my goodness! Tell me, so now, tell I'm me the story. The story of all of our lives right now, right? Right. Shit. Right. Um. So go ahead. I want to just jump into the questions. Uh, quick quickly, you know, not, not quickly, like rushing you with your response, yeah. but I want to present them pretty fast on my end. So how do you use body language to communicate in your personal life? Oh, man. I, look, let's first, let's just say Grace did the thing, okay? She spoke so much. Yeah, through. she did. Um, I, I honestly <laughs> don't feel like I have much to say after that, mm. but um, I, I, I think... I just I, I do have to agree with her as far as you knowing yourself and putting in the work um, allows you to understand how you communicate. You know, so for me, like I talk with my hands. For me, I mean, I have a a very strong voice, especially when I'm talking about something that I know, experience, passionate about, that type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, body language is everything. I mean, it's it's like she said, it's it's what is it like? 80 percent or something of, of, of communicating um, and so you know you have to be mindful of those things like when you're a tall person i'm six one right when i'm around <laughs> people that are shorter than me i try not to do certain things like standing over them or that type of thing to intimidate them you know what i mean mm. um, like you have to understand those intricacies about who you are and then how that communicates to people that you don't know and know. Um, right. You know, as men, if we have deep voices, we know a deep voice yelling at the kids yeah. is going to do something to them. But if, nice. if it's to your girl or your wife, mm, yeah. you got to be careful how you use your voice. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I'm saying? The tone and how you say what you say. So it's th those things I have learned and keep learning and probably will relearn um, mm. and how to effectively communicate without even saying a word. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Yeah, man. Okay, 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 okay. And I wanted to go and say, um, when was the time uh, that you felt like you had to change your social etiquette in the moment of code switching, basically, to, uh, I guess, fit in or network, you know what I'm saying, to bring further, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> further what you have going on within the music industry or any industry that you get yourself involved in? Yeah, I, I mean, let's be honest. I'm black, so I was born to do that. You know what I mean, uh, I, I do remember times growing up, single mother, my mom, shout out my mom who's watching, uh, and my sister, I have a twin sister, and she, I, all I remember is just telling us we had to work harder than everyone else. Mm. And you don't really know what that means until you really see that you do just because you come in and you black and you're confident and you look at people in their eyes that they treat you different that they look at you different 
You know what I mean? So oh. I, I remember at least being in high school where, you know, being a young kid, young teenager, uh, a lot of us curse, right? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, you say whatever, you know what I mean? Um, but I did that amongst friends, but I did not do that when I was around adults, whether black, white, whatever. And, uh, you know, shout out to Grace for uh, being in Virginia a little while, but most people who, who know the VA area, especially Northern Virginia, it is a diverse people. That's why I do love the area. I love being around all types of people. But uh, if I was around adults, I never uttered curse. Nothing. Like, it was all about mm -hmm. respect, manners. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yes, it was. His days, you know, I, I, I'm going to sound old, but, you know, it, it's, it's different. Like, they don't care it no is. more. Oh. You know yeah, what I mean? But but those things are are early on, and then you know you move into college, you move into your career, and I, I think going back to what Grace said again, you 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 have to really understand who you are because you got to be confident. So yeah, when I'm in like the IT world as a writer, most people are white around me. You come into this place, and they you can just sense the. Like what? Like what is he? You know, Who is he? and 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 the Why way Troy, the way that I I really, I don't call it fitting in, but it's all about relation and connecting, right? So I'm very, mm -hmm. just very authentic, real, honest, open, transparent. I think that's the best way to be. In the last few years, I've just been more of that because I guess it, it feels good. But I find something to actually relate to. And then make them realize that yeah, I'm human. Right. 100%. And I, I've done the work. You know what I mean. And so I find myself the more I, I, I'm able to do that, it's not so much code switching anymore. It's now I'm just me. You know, I come in with mm. my whole time and, and my fresh socks and all these things and being creative and you know bringing my blackness into these places. <laughs> And it's like, nah, I'm not going to switch so much that I'm not me. And I think that's kind of mm. where the cold switching is really like, okay, yeah, I know I got to be different to fit the setting, but when you're different, meaning like you're a whole different person. Yeah, yeah that's when you start to lose yourself. Sometimes people play the game, but lose themselves while they're exactly. playing. Exactly. <laughs> um, yep. So I'm going to yep. go ahead and I wanted to bring up the third question, how do you detect unforeseen programming? Yeah, I, you know, this question seemed kind of hard, but after hearing Grace talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. She gracefully blessed the question. I mean, come on, man. Like, I can't, like, <laughs> shout out to Grace, you know. Like, and everyone, yeah, I'm so she, eager she, to find out what, what Corey's gonna say next. Like, everyone's perspective is... No men, too. Yeah, yeah, no Mrs. Pitt, but yeah, we I can't wait to get them on. <laughs> so go ahead, tackle the question for me. But yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I have to again piggyback off of her that you know, you can't detect what you don't know. So if you don't know you, you can't detect anything. You know, and and it's not one of those things where you just you have to point out. You know, it, it it's it's a way to do it in love, encouragement. You know, as they say now, I think the word feedback is, is becoming big. You know, use that rather than trying to really say that you're critiquing someone. But uh, I think it really does start there. But paying attention, listening, you know, going below the surface, I think that's one of the big things that people don't do. Mainly, I guess, because we're taught that way. Uh, you know, ideally, you know, whatever our parents did, we teach our kids with no why behind why are we doing this are we doing it mm -hmm. because this really makes sense to me or just because i was taught this you know mm -hmm. i mean we could dive into racism about this but you, we ain't gonna go there yet but you see what i'm saying though you right 100 gotta get below the surface when people say hey how you doing oh i'm fine and you really not fine yeah. like jay gnome like yes. i appreciate you for saying that like yo this is the place that i'm in um we know that's not easy, but the fact that you were vulnerable and open enough to share that not only with us in the world is going to help somebody else who's in that exact same place. So it's like you really got to go below the surface. And I think once you can, once you can do that for yourself, you can be able to go through watching the, the election, the pandemic, 
the this, the that, the people in your industry, and see, like, yeah, they're not really, nah, it's, something's off. And yeah. then you can, <laughs> you know, get to the realness yeah. of it. <laughs> yes, yeah, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I wanted to say thank you for coming on once again. Um, I did yes, love sir. the answers. I did love your answers to the, to the questions. What we're going to do right now is ever so swiftly move on to Corey. We'll be bringing Corey up right now, and I look forward to your performance later. All right, Jason? For sure. Yes, sir. 100. Hey, everybody. So far, so so good. Uh, I've been loving the interactions with the comments and what people have been saying and all the love that they've been showing Campfire Sessions. This has been an amazing session so far. So let's continue moving forward slowly for surely. Here we go. All right, Corey, you're up next. Here he is. Boom. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. Can I? I can't. I can't hear you uh, as of right now. Can you hear me now? You blah 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 blah. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> blah 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 blah. That was <laughs> I can make sure we good. <laughs> yeah, I'm comfortable now, man. I didn't loosen up a little bit. I feel like I got. Do you do you have a a, a microphone set? Because nah, it's, you sound nah. pretty far away a little bit. So you might. Okay. Is this better? I'm okay. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's better. That's, okay, like I could do this angle, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. All right. The audio's perfect. All right. All right. Cool. 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 So the first question that we're gonna go ahead with is, uh, how do you use body language to communicate? Well, for me, you know, the way I see it, body language is, it's, it's also includes the way we express ourselves uh, verbally. So like tone, affliction, uh, those type of things. So back to what kind of what Grace was saying about using the body. I mean, when it comes to mixed signals, it's not matching what you're saying in part. Uh, for me, exactly, to answer the question personally, um, I have a tick, really, almost in a way where when I'm focused on something, I'll sit down, I'm extremely quiet. But as soon as I start tapping my foot or I'm doing one of these numbers, and if my wife sees it, she'll understand, like, okay, Either A, he's frustrated when I start making faces. You know, my facial expressions, I'll be like, he's able to identify, okay, he's frustrated by something, but he's also focused at the same time. So at that point, she can help me um, by, you know, uh, by uh, interfering or creating a distraction so that way I can get away from that thing now because I'm bound to it um, based on my energy, you know, my, my body language, the facial expressions, again, the leg tapping, that's saying that I'm frustrated, but I'm fixing at the same time on this certain thing. Mm. Yeah. You know what Makes I mean? Sense. So that, that's one of the ways where I communicate my body language if I need help or something like that. You know, if I'm frustrated, um, I'll be my facial expressions, especially, um, my body gestures, my arms may cross, you know, um, I may stand straighter, my posture might change. You know, the way I turn my neck might change to communicate something is a little off. Uh, mm. when listening as a as a receiver, you know, there's two parts. So as a receiver, those are the actions. My actions change. My behaviors change based on what I'm hearing. If it correlates with something I understand. If not, I might do one of these and ask a question. Hey, can you please explain what you're saying? Instead of saying, like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Can you explain it? You see the difference in the tone there? That mm -hmm. form of nonverbal communication. Mm, I like that. I like that. I like that addition no, that you put out there. Another um, thing is, um, I, I wanted to move on to the second question and ask you: When was the time that you had to use code switching? Uh, mm. code switching. That's mm. a good question. Um, I'm going to give you a <laughs> first example. Would be in middle school. Um, me and my wife, we go way back to middle school. But when I first met her grandfather, she was giving me information data on how to best make a good impression so i guess in a way it was different from how i authentically am very charismatic and uh, conversational but i felt uh, some sort of pressure to act more formal so that way i could make a good impression so i think the first the first example so i would say that's a good example for me uh second example uh would be as I started becoming more of a professional, uh, similar to what the gentleman was dating, you know, you go into these establishments, these communities of people who have uh, achieved the things that you believe in your mind to be true that are achievable, right? Um, however, 
the representation of you is very little. So mm. the code switching there, again, is going to be the way that you communicate and introduce yourself to that community uh, without being too slow, but also without not, you know, without living your true self and expression. You know, so it's that. This is there in front of the mind is what kind of aids on that battlefield of code switching. Like, okay, how do I respond to this? You know, how should I introduce that? You know, if I smile too big, I don't think I'm crazy. You know, I don't know. You know, do I, do I give a slight smile or do I get the whole smile? You know, do I embrace you with a hug? Do I you know, sit back and give you a handshake? You know what I'm saying? Right. Those type of things. Are those behaviors accepted within this community? You know, so that's that would be like an example, the second example. Nice, nice, nice. And how do you put, uh, how do you, uh, how do you detect unforeseen programming? I think for me, um, oftentimes, uh, that's related to, uh, for me, a lack of trust, lack of self-trust, mm. personally. Uh, when I feel the need or the urge to impress someone, that's me already attempting to uh, outside of who I am. So mm. now I'm attempting to impress someone. I might, you know, fa exaggerate a little bit, hyperbolize something. You know what I mean? Uh, mm. I might emphasize certain words or elements in my story to in a certain type of way. You know, kind of like flower it up. So instead of me just communicating it confidently as normal, if I say, yeah, I'm practicing to be a life coach, you know, but I believe my life coach, but I'm around professionals who are doing it. Now I may feel that intimidation factor. Now I want to impress. And, mm. you know, I might come in differently if I'm just myself. I've already been doing it. And I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to be a life coach. I recently heard of it. So the way that you express it is different. That's the way, that's how, that's how I interpret it. Right? So the difference between trying to impress someone and simply communicating with someone. Mm. Very, very well, very well put. Very well. Put. <laughs> so, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm we're running low on time. I don't. I'm gonna let you go, Corey, so I can make this announcement real quick to the audience. Um, let me remove you. So right now we're running low on time. I would like to bring up Jay Noman, but I don't want him to rush necessarily through the questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this first hour right now, and then I'm going to start the second hour. We're going to bring Jay Noman on. Uh, thank you, everybody, so far that's tuned in. We'll be right back in the next five minutes, all right? Five, four to five minutes, roughly, maybe even sooner than that. My phone is not overheating, so I should be back really soon. All right, so thank you so far. I hope to see y'all all during the second hour. Here we go.